Hi, I'm Andy from Renovate Innovate. Today we're outside Premier Paint Supplies, our local paint suppliers. We're here today, part of our painting series of videos. This video, we're gonna debunk some myths about paint and also help you choose the right paint for your job. Let's get inside and have a look around. Wow, so here we are. I can see why some people are getting a little bit bemused by all this choice there is here. This is unreal. The amount of colours. Wow, obviously there's loads of colours to choose from, but the base and the paint. Wow, we're wanting some paint for a few projects we've got coming up. We've got a video to show you. I'm, I think a feature wall we'll be showing you. We've got some decking to paint, some repairs to make on other projects. Oh, with some wood stains. Wow. Yeah, so we're going to get some help. We're going to ask one of the staff. I think there's about 100 years of experience between them all here in the paint industry, so we'll go and get them to help us. Wow, let's keep going. This is a fantastic place. Oh, it all seems to be laid out. Here we've got emulsion paints or multi-surface painting over tiles and all sorts of things. Yeah, what else we got? Metal paints. We've got a bizarre mirror. And why not? Wow, what we've got down here? I don't know what. Oh, water based undercoat. Of course, there's undercoat, there's water based and oil based. I think the, uh, the reason why we've got these water based is all to do with VOCs, you know, the volatile organic compounds that they're trying to get out of paint, it damages the environment or whatever. We'll debunk that myth. We'll ask one of these members of staff here in a bit. Wow, even more. Oh, I'm just looking at this thing. Look at this. Oh wow, look at this, this is a paint effect, rust effect. We'll ask about that in a bit. I might take that sample with me. Wow. Of course the paint effect walls are becoming more and more popular at the minute. Floor paints, industrial paints. Yeah, let's just keep going. We'll need some decking soon. Of course with decking, if you choose the wrong colour and it's too dark, you can't go lighter. You've got to get these choices correct in the first place. Wow. Loads of product down here to help you get the paint on the wall. Wow. Oh, what have we got here? I don't even know what this is. Ready mix wall covering adhesive, I see. Tapes, frog tapes. Wow, I think we'll be using a product like this, frog tape, on our feature wall that we'll be doing. We're choosing the colours. We'll get some help with that. Oh, see a different colour is for different paints. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And it's special, as it says here, it keeps the line sharp. You put this on, some people cork up to the edge. I don't think you need to with frog tape, with masking tape. You just cork up to the edge and paint over and peel it off. You get a really crisp line as it's showing there. Maybe we'll show that in situ working properly as well when we do our feature wall. Our fillers, these are important as well. Different kinds of fillers. You have to use the right filler for your job. Yeah. Let's move them around here. It's, wow. Oh yeah, now we're on to the different suppliers of the paint, all laid out different colours for different kinds of base. You can get any colours in these pretty much. Full gloss, full undercoat. What does it all mean? <laughs> Satin finish, eggshell, moving round. Surely that's it for paint? <laughs> I don't think so. Exterior wood stain. Now, we've got a few projects coming up with this. I'm got, not something I do loads of, apart from choosing the colour. That's probably all I think. I need to think about, but it's not. There's loads, there's different kinds. Polyurethane varnish, quick drying. Yeah, knowing the right one to use is important. Wow, eggshell, non-drip satin, one coat. Is it one coat? <laughs> and then we've got here exterior paint. Well, I suppose it's uh, masonry paint. You can use it inside. I've seen it used inside. Um, some of it's got bits in it, a um, bit of texture. And some of it's smooth. More paint. Well, we've been invited into the back room. Ah, we all have been invited to the back room um, to have a look at the equipment we've got in here. I'm not too sure what's here, but we're in the capable hands of Ricky, is that right? And he's going to show us what we've got in here. So, oh, yeah. so we've got various mixing machines in here. Uh, we start off with our Anticorilla machine here, which does just about almost anything. It's fairly new to us, uh, but it's a fantastic machine. 
moving up, we've got a crown machine. Are these um, just mixing machines? Is that primarily? These are primarily mixing machines. What we actually do is we take the various bases, we put them under our machines, we mix a uh, recommended colour, what we either we recommend are colours chosen, an architect specified, and then we mix it up to that specific colour. Uh, on the crown machine, they do have a spectrometer and we can almost get an exact colour from a match off a tile or anything what's fairly solid. Oh, so somebody, that, somebody can bring anything in, is that so, right? So that's right, yeah, oh, anybody wow. can virtually bring anything and we'll do, do it on the spectrometer and get that colour. Wow, yeah. Uh, moving on, we have Benjamin Moore, uh, least of the known brands, but Which probably are. one of the best. It's an American paint, uh, uh, predominantly started off in the London area and it's gone further afield now. So, fantastic machine. Wow. This is a, a shaker. Uh, just open it up, put it in. Select, select the exciting machine. <laughs> yep, select, <laughs> select your timings, uh, shake them up, and hopefully your paint is mixed. Can it be over mixed? I'm just wondering now. It can't be over mixed. No. That's, there's no way mixed. that no. can happen. No, it can't be I've heard rumours. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's the no. already. <laughs> Prob only oh, problem yeah, you can have is uh, sometimes you can have a, a, a can too small, too large, so obviously not good because it comes down on a clamp. Yeah. Then there's a mess, and from, <laughs> from time to time, metal does split or plastic does crack, uh, and you do get accidents. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Wow, what's this, one? this one's a little green machine. Uh, they do all national trust colours. So very good for anything authentic, any National Trust houses, a uh, bit like Faro and Ball, who oh, oh, dealing that one, but great machine. And at the moment, Little Green's the only one what supply National Trust. Yeah. Colour Trend, uh, an American paint again, but predominantly Irish, made in Ireland, uh, all earth born type colours, uh, natural colours. Uh, same again, they all pretty much work pretty much the same. You get a base, you put it underneath, you select your colour. But some great colours on there, and that's only a water-based product. They don't deal in any oil-based products whatsoever, only in water. So great machine uh, and great colours, fantastic paint. High-end stuff like Little Green. What was the name of this one again? Sorry. This one's called Colour Trend. Colour Trend, right? Yeah. So yeah. Trend. Wow. Uh, Moving on, this is the latest of our machines. This is new to us. This is probably the one what everybody knows. This is a Dulux machine. This is from Axo Nobel. They do two brands. They do their trade brand and they do their Armstead brand. Uh, both trade quality stuff, both fantastic stuff. Obviously, everybody knows the Dulux one, the Armstead is predominantly trade. Uh, and from America. This is their mixing machine, uh, just a not normal shaker up and down. The fancy of the mix mach mixing machines is this one, uh, and this one comes from America, and unlike most machines what just shake up and down, this one spirals, it goes up and down, it moves around, so it's quite unique. If you want me to put a tin in and you can want to have a quick look at it, I can do that. I reckon. Uh, it will take anyone. Two and a half litre, just open it up, pop it in the middle, close the door, press start, and you will see it spiralling. pre-selected times, you press that button for that time. This one actually weighs the product, shakes it round until it feels it's been mixed. 
Right, so what we've done is we found a quiet corner of the shop. It's a very busy, it's a working shop out there. There's loads of customers who come here, it's nice and quiet. We can have a little chat and get on with these paints. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some paints, different paints I've got on offer here. Afterwards, Faye's going to show us around the wallpaper section and the fabrics. Is that right? We'll yeah, afterwards. yeah lots of fabrics as well. First question I think we'd like to get out of the way is what is the difference between trade paint and retail paint? Retail paint, look, see. Retail this is where your expertise comes in. And what is the difference if you can tell these? Tell uh, these lovely people. people. Yes, yes, please. So the biggest difference is the quality, um, uh, the thickness, uh, the amount of coverage you get out of the paint. Um, retail paint tends to be a lot thinner, can't water it down. Trade paint, a lot thicker, better opacity, get better coverage, goes a bit further. And then if you've got this much left in the bottom, you can pop a bit of water in. You yeah. can thin that down and it'll still uh, it'll still work. And it'll stay the same colour with a bit of water in. More Absolutely there. fine. Yeah. Just a lot better quality. And slightly dearer, people tend to think it's the other way. But trade paint always tends to be a little bit dearer because it's a little bit better quality. Right. A lot better quality. Uh, well, I've heard a myth that trade paint is only for new plaster, is that? Oh, no, is there, there is specific trade paints for new plaster. So yeah. you've got things, um, we do like the McPherson's Eclipse, yes. which is, contains no vinyl. Yeah. So when you plaster, obviously you have your plaster there, um, a vinyl paint will sit on the top. You want the paint to go and into the it. The paint has to go in, so yeah. you get a, a good quality or even a cheap white emulsion, water it down and it penetrates the plaster yeah. and then it'll subsequent coats will all stick. You have to put that, that yeah. dilute Yeah, so yeah, down, 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 yeah. down, yeah. Always, oh. always do that. Like I said, you can even use a, uh, just a cheap white emulsion. And just make sure you thin it down. That's probably why paint on plaster walls peels more often than not. Biggest, biggest yeah. problem, people come in and they've peeled a little bit off and Because the paint's not, it's not, not bonded it's sat, into it's the, on the It's sat on the surface. Yeah, um, yeah what, what about with oil-based paint? Because that often peels as well. Or, Paint. paint for woodwork, what do we call it now? It's not all oil based now, is it? No, most of the products now are water based. So, we can still, so years ago, if you've got old um, woodwork, probably it's probably glossy, it's also probably oil based. Yeah. So, the, the best thing you can do is the sand the shine off, not too much, but you've got to take that edge off it. Yeah. Uh, and then, after you've done that, use a water based primer and undercoat all in one, yeah. and then you top coat change it all to water-based system though. Do you have to use, because I've heard this myth as well, that well, you have to use the correct, the same brand undercoat as top no. coat? No. Because it can mix uh, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Some companies will specify it and yeah. if you have a problem with it and they send somebody out, they'd be like, you've not used our, our entire system. Right, so, and that's the reason why. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. But a lot of decorators don't stick to that rule and, no. and to be honest, neither am I. Do you find that decorators stick with it, their own brand or do you, are you able to sway them? Mm, some, some, some have been swayed over the years with the dearer brandings, the, the kind of really top-notch paint companies. Um, some yeah will always go, no, I've had that more than a few years. Yeah. And and that's what they do. But that's fair enough. They've all they've all got their favourites anyway. And with the quality of paints as well, the trade paint and the retail paint yeah. and the different price range that you've got, is there a difference in the way it goes on the wall, whether it be new plaster or or a redecoration, or do you think they all handle the same? No, you tend to find that the, the cheaper end of the trade paints yeah. tend to be a, a bit thinner. Um, you'll find that you'll struggle with darker colours. So oh, if you buy covering, it, the darker, coverage, yeah, yeah. If you if you buy the the, yeah. the top quality branding, so yeah, you've got Colour Trend, Little Green, uh, Benjamin Moore, which is the American one. Yeah. Um, the dark colours. I always say buy the dearest one you can. When it comes to dark colours, you'll get. The, the colours will have depth yeah. and they'll look beautiful where the, the thinner paints You're not takes, takes more build up. Uh, yeah, well, we've seen your colour mixing room there and fantastic. Yeah. There's <laughs> a lot to choose from. <laughs> can you uh, can you get any colour in any paint? Or uh, Just about. Um, a lot of companies, like I said, have these big swatches. Uh, most of them have them. Uh, I do colour matching all the time from different companies, from one company to another. So, so you, you could do a, this company's colour base or no? Not no, this, no. no not this, this, one. this one's American, yeah, yeah. so they're really weird can sizes and different finishes, uh, so yeah. I can't do these in anything else. Right. Um, and legally, no, you're not supposed nah, to. Yeah, yeah, I get Shall that. we leave it at that one? When it comes to painting, yes. you just go and buy, pick up any tin of paint, is that right? 
and you can just I'm, I'm sure you could on any but I wouldn't on any surface is that right <laughs> no no can you no, have well, yes so it depends on what you're doing so if you're doing your walls my yep. first question normally is you pick a colour I will then venture into what finish would you like. Picking the colour, well, we'll come on to that in a minute, yeah. Yeah, yeah. picking the colours are a whole different yeah. ball game. But yeah, we, we want to know what finish you want. So um, do, you, do you want it flat? Yeah. Do you want it slightly shiny? We'd never recommend shiny, shiny. Yeah. Uh, and then do you want it washable? So you've got different options. Uh, you've got your normal mats, which aren't really that wipeable. You've then got your washable mats. Mats are the ones that you wash it and the paint comes off when you do it, yeah. On, on, a, on a cheap one, yeah, yeah it, it can yeah. do, but yeah, if you get a washable mat, you can get a scrubbable mat, uh, they will take quite a bit of stick. You, you can give them a scrub down, that's yeah. what I have at home. Um, and also you can have mid-sheen, which is also washable. Yeah. So, slight sheen level, nothing I can really show you that. So, like probably high, high traffic up, areas, like a stairway or a kitchen bath. Definitely you know, washable like mats different. or mid-sheens. Yeah. Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. Everything, obviously, at the moment is very matte. Yeah. So, all companies have. A washable mat now. And woodwork, that's the next thing. Same paint, is it, for woodwork? No. 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 <laughs> Interior, exterior, same paint? No. no. Okay. Some of it is, that yeah. gets confusing. Yeah. But yeah, you, you would work, most people tend to go for a satin or an eggshell now. Not many people want gloss. Yeah. But it is becoming a big trend for front doors again, to have glossy front doors. That, yeah. Just to venture off that. But yeah, uh, depends on what you want to do, like I said, the satin is the biggest seller, more than anything else. Right, yeah. Um, and water-based is the, the kind of main trend because obviously you've got problems with, a lot of people have problems with breathing. Yeah. So you'll find that VOC content yeah, in oil-based paint is, can, is quite high. And this it is can what affect drove people. the change from oil-based to water-based. Yes. Yeah, so the Americans yeah. have done it for years. They've not, not been allowed to produce these oil-based products where we still can. Um, you'll find that all retail paint is all water-based, where we still can do oil-based paint. Um, but yes, it can affect people's breathing. Anybody who's asthmatic, um, it can it can affect them. So you tend to find that people are going more water-based. And as long as you prep right, then there's, there's no issue. Another thing I've heard of when I've been to jobs in the past is use the same paint on the wall and on the skirting and the drives. Is that recommended? Is that possible? No, no. Well, so, some companies do state that their paints do. So yeah. uh, Little Green, yeah. uh, they do state that their washable mat does go on woodwork. Yeah. But if you've got the issue that if it's, it's not the right, if right. it's an oil-based one that's been on before, it's it's not going to stick. It'll, it'll go on. on. Yeah. You catch it. It'll be straight off. Uh, feature walls on paint effects or paint effects. So like yes, uh, this, uh, the this, this, there's lots and lots of different paint effects you can do. Um, so this one is from a company called Craig and Rose, um, and you can do, you can get like a copper effect. That's I don't know amazing. if you can see that very well. These are two part. So yeah, well you right? can you can leave this as it is. Yep. You don't have to do anything else with it, but you can buy a liquid then that goes over the top, which creates. I will get this right. The verdigris effect. Oh yes, but yes. yes. So you end up, you can. Splash it, flick it, sponge it on, create whatever effect you have. So versus that and that. So they are quite popular. There's quite a few places in town actually right, that, yeah. have, that have used this. I'll not mention a couple of bars. Yeah. Also uh, in the home though. Yeah. Oh, and in the, on the home, not yeah, just yeah, the bars, yeah, yeah. but yes, anywhere around the home. Oh, and you can also use it outside, was, which yeah. is quite unusual for a product like that, which is an inside-outside thing. Uh, they also do one that looks like rust. So I have a few people, sorry, <laughs> I have a few people that have had a bash at this. Um, they've said it looks amazing. So I've got a couple of ladies who got it on like kitchen use, walls. I was going to do this in your bathrooms. It could be used there some exterior paint, maybe. It does say that you can use them outside, but I'd be a bit dubious about anything that's in a bathroom. Okay. It, they tend to be that steamy that you do sometimes have to be careful. And where well, if it's outside on a fountain, you're not going to wipe uh, yeah, it. Yeah, um, where in a bathroom, You'd, yeah. you'd want to be able to wipe it down. So, so yeah, a bit of expertise. <laughs> Let's put it anywhere. Yeah, Bathrooms yeah. are always the, the iffy place to, to play with, whether it be wallpaper or paint. Always get something specific for bathrooms. Um, so, we've interior, exterior paint. We've covered different bases, different effects. 
Yep, different effects. There's also different finishes for outside as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. Always, but you... Oh, we saw some when we're walking around, yeah. Yeah, you'll have seen... There's quite Smooth a... and textured, that's all I've seen. So that's, there's more. That's masonry paint. Right, yeah. So that's normally a water-based product that goes just on your walls. Yeah. Render, brick, things like that. Yeah. And then obviously you've got front doors to contend uh, with. Yeah. You've got window sills. Um, Soffits, sheds, oh, fences, yeah. soffits, yeah. Um, there's a lot you can paint outside. So it all depends. We always say kind of come in, really discuss what you want from this. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of products, it used to be just gloss. Yeah. Everything was glossy outside. It's, it is the biggest protection you can get, uh, a, a glossy finish outside. Yeah. But people now want mats and satins. All right, so next little thing we want to touch on is finding the perfect colour. Um, yeah. How <laughs> well, do we do this? Well, I think we do. I think it's one hundred and twenty-five thousand different colours. So you just get a piece of each and just try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd suggest a tester pot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One hundred and twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. It is. It is very difficult. Um, I don't think I should even skirt on how people. Uh, I have a lot of people who are colour blind customers. So that can be really, is that really difficult. Oh, okay. Yes, a lot. Yeah. A lot of them don't even know. It, it can be really, really difficult. Bless them. Um, but I'd normally say, bring me something in. Um, like? You could bring me almost anything in. What's the worst thing somebody brought in? The worst thing somebody <laughs> brought me in was, was, a, was a pair of pants. But they were they were, they were were clean and brand new um, and folded up nicely in a bag. Um, slippers, cushions, lampshades. Really? All these, yeah. What, whatever you want to bring. If, if you see something out and, and go, oh, random piece of paper, I like that colour. If you bring me it, I will do that. my hardest to find you that colour wow. somewhere. Wow. That's so it. it is It is very overwhelming, but yeah, feel free, you can always bring me something in. I'll do it day when in and day get, out. When you get the right colour, I'm just looking at one of these here. Yeah. And it looks great here in this shop. Yes. What happens when you take it home and it's, yeah, not quite right? It will all depend on your lighting. It, it, it's horrendous. If, if you've got um, yellow lighting, so the warm light bulbs, yeah. you'll tend to find that it'll bring out in greys, especially browner tones. Right. But you find that kitchens and bathrooms tend to be white light, so it's always like a slightly bluey tone. Yeah. So this will suddenly go from being like a, a stony grey brown Should to all of a sudden being quite grey blue. This. We'll take that for a walk around. And yeah, see yeah, we can do that out there if you want. That's well, why I got that. You can do it on the colour wall we've seen out there. I can, yeah. can do it on the colour wall. I can do it on the colour trend by going under the lighting and then out of the lighting. Yes. Yeah, so that's the best that. one to do it. Yeah. Right? The best thing to do is come in here and get buy a sample. Yeah, a proper it, painted a proper sample painted as well, yeah. so which are quite good. This is the exact colour that the paint. This is, yeah, yeah. They they paint these. You buy these. It's cheaper than a sample pot, and you don't have to mess up painting. It's also on your wall. When you see little bits of dark colour painted on a wall, that someone's going to go out and then they choose the light colour. Yeah, it, it, so it, is my, it is my pet hate. Yeah, I'd yeah. say the biggest one and the biggest piece of advice I could give to anybody was if you buy a sample pot, please paint it onto a piece of paper. paper. Yeah, <laughs> big piece. Yeah, yeah, lining massive paper, old li lining paper, yeah. wallpaper. Move it round your room because it might look fantastic in that corner, might look horrendous in that corner. Yeah. And if you've got a decorator coming in afterwards, he will have to sand that sample off. Yeah. And they hate it. And, and the decorator's <laughs> going to notice it. The yes. Always yes. Notice it. And yeah. you will, you'll see the square shine through it. And yeah. it, it does look awful. It'll take some prep work to get rid of it. Well, shall we go and have a look and see how light affects these different Yeah, colors? of course we can. Yeah. So let's do that. Come on. Right, so we'll come back out on the shop floor. We're picking up again with Ricky. It's a working shop, and Faye's got a customer in there. She's choosing the wallpaper, that's her expertise, but Ricky's is the paint, and he's going to help us now, helping us out, show us how light affects a different paint sample. So I'm going to hand over to you. So yeah, obviously when you uh, when you come into our shop, uh, we've got various stands here. Uh, most of them are lit up, so you get your best uh, choice of colour. So if you look at this, if you look at some of the colours and how they perform under light, uh, one of our little tricks is we take a, a card because people pick a colour, they get get it back at home, and then they actually say that colour's nothing like I picked in your shop. Obviously, we're looking at its brightest point. But if you get a colour card and actually come down it, it, it changes colour completely from. So you can see the difference just across that one there that it can be so light and it can be so dark and that's just dependent on a customer's light within there whether it's a bright light a warm light whether it's north facing or south facing and plenty of sunshine in there uh, one of the other stands has a little trick on 
what a lot of them do. So on the little green one, we'll have a look at that. if you yeah. want to come and have a look at this one, you might not get it because it's quite light in here, but if you actually look, we've got bright light there and we can switch it to... This is all the same colour on these blocks, is that all, right? Yeah. All the same colour on the block. If you actually, if you actually look down the side, it's quite dark quite light on the top and probably a medium colour. So these blocks are actually there so that we can see three different shades of colour. Uh, dark, medium and bright light with the light shining down. And then you see this I'm hoping that the camera picks it up. We've got bright light here. Nice. We can switch, a little switch, oh, yeah. and it changes to warm oh, lighting. Yeah. So you can actually see a completely different variation of colour there. So obviously on a Benjamin Moore, which is which is an American, uh, up to 3,600 different colours. And if you just go down a, a, the colour spectrum, obviously from reddy oranges, come down that spectrum all the way down it, goes across onto the yellows, comes into the greens, you've got your kind of neutral colours and then the bright colours and it will follow that down each colour spectrum so you can do your browns, your blues, your greys, greens, your yellows uh, they're, all in, they're all in there in a palette uh, you have your historical colours as well if you want something more than that then obviously on the Benjamin Moore which is quite unique they do have a colour selector as well so in here we have different fans so I'll pick a really bright one for you and you can see the, the colours there. If you decide you want one of those, we can then do little tear off samples, which we tear off, and you can take them away. We cut them, you can see that they've all got a unique number, a cutting slot across the bike, which the customer can take away, uh, and then they can put it at their palette and look at it in their own shade and their own lighting at home, which is fantastic for them and good for us, because we don't get it wrong then. There you go. That's just one of the fan decks. Obviously we do six and they all do differ. Well, I'd just like to thank Ricky for that expertise. That's brilliant, thanks very much. Phase three now, so we're gonna go back into the wallpaper room, pick up on a few more bits, and it's a good time. Right. Thank you so much for That's your right. time and expertise. Very welcome. Hopefully we've helped all the people out there. I think before we sign off on this video, you're going to show us around some of these wallpapers and fabrics, is that right? I can, yeah. So we have uh, 600 books, fabric and wallpaper, wow. which is a lot. Yes. Um, this is the biggest collection in the whole uh, village? Uh, I'd say bigger than Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Uh, bigger than Yorkshire. Fantastic shop. We have customers yep. in uh, Cornwall, Newcastle. Uh, we just send some to Australia. So, wow. hey, we're worldwide. We're that was worldwide. a question I was going to ask. You can send these books out? Yeah. Uh, we don't send the books oh. out. We have to buy these and there's only like one copy. But yeah. if anybody does want to come, they can borrow them and take them home. Yeah. Again, with the lighting issue, you can pick in here, but chances are it might not look right in your house. Yeah. So you can come in here. We can show you around. We generally help you pick something and then colour match to it. Yeah. Um, and price-wise, basically start at 20 and go to 300, which I think what you said you wanted to have a look at. Yes, I think, absolutely. Excuse me, one second. Okay, this is the one, this is the expensive. This is probably one of the dearest things dearest. we keep in the shop. What, um, this book? This, this book, this oh. kind of caught me. Yeah, we yeah. can look. Oh. So they are, they are beautiful, beautiful books. God, um, yeah, this is most of these are like, hand, kind of like a handmade. So you yeah. don't know if you can tell on camera how it's, made from so that's real grass that they yep. use in this thank you so they they are beautiful now these you buy by the meter and the price per meter well so they're 91 centimeters wide if that makes you feel any better yeah, yeah. but they kind of retail at about 295 pound a meter wow but we always do discount so it wouldn't be quite that much but, this but still fantastic. Uh, yeah. it's more of an art piece yeah. so if i show you this it's one not every home no so this one is, is fantastic. This one's made from strips of wood. Um, stunning colours. Wow. But if you look at this side, it does show you that you don't have to have a wall of it. So you can just have um, put it on a board and basically create an art piece, which 
probably cheaper than buying an expensive art piece. This, yeah, on but this looks too much. Isn't yeah, it? looks beautiful. Would you want a full wall? Probably not. Would you want a board like when you move house? Take you can it, yeah. take it with you wow. instead of trying to peel it off your wall. So yes, that's one of one of the dearest things. But at least the ones you try and sell more. Of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do still occasionally sell them. Yeah. It depends on what you want. And then obviously different wallpapers come in obviously quite dramatic different sizes now. So everybody should recognise that just wallpaper. This the width. width of wallpaper. <laughs> it is normal paper. 52, 53 centimetres the normal width. And how long have these been around? I've never seen them myself. These, these are great. Yeah. They are fantastic. Um, you find a lot of companies now venturing into this size. I'd yeah. probably say maybe a third, maybe a half of our books now are all these extra wide. Right, yeah. Less joins. Less like paper as well. Half, is it? Oh, yeah. uh, about 30%, I think it is. Well, bigger yeah. than, than a normal roll. And Do you then, need a bigger paste table. <laughs> I or, pay, well, most of them paste the wall. Yeah. I forgot about that. But yeah, 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 most of them are paste the wall, so you don't Which have that issue. Yeah. And there's no soaking I time. It's easier to line up. You don't rip the paper. Way the quicker wall. and easier. Yeah. Um, but if it is paste of paper, um, over. Yeah. Just, if you've Do got somebody else technique. folding on the yeah. other side, then doing it over has always been a lot easier. And then, yeah. They brought out these. I can imagine this as a <laughs> wet paper. That would be awful as a wet paper, but this is paste wall. This one yeah. is also paste a wall, yeah. so it is 106 centimetres wide, which is a double width roll. It's not to my taste, but this is quality. Yeah, yeah. It is. This is a, a designer Italian paper, yeah. which we do have quite a few of. There's quite a lot of the designers all make paper. But yes, they're like a non-woven paste the wall, which just makes it so much easier. So. I'd, I'd say we've probably got about six or seven books now, which are bringing all these ones out. Wow. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. That's all right. This You're welcome. An absolute pleasure. I've learned lots myself. Hope you have. Thanks for watching. And if you ever liked this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.